five rules of causation. Clearly show the cause and effect relationship. Use specific descriptors, not vague words. Identify preceding causes, not human error. Identify preceding causes of procedure violations. Failure to act is only casual when there is a pre-existing duty to act. Five rules of causation. During the RCA process, when crafting root cause statements, hospitals can avoid the trap of not digging deep enough by understanding and utilizing the five rules of causation. Technically, all five rules of causation should be applied to each root cause, but certain rules may be more applicable than others when writing specific root cause statements. For example, when describing a system vulnerability that involves staff training, it is particularly important to avoid negative descriptions, for example, poorly trained pharmacist, and to focus on the system reasons for the lack of adequate training. Often, targeted changes involve several layers of intervention, including staff training, policy creation or revision, electronic health record, which is the EHR changes or enhancements, and work area redesign, to name just a few. Applying the five rules of causation makes work exercise for the RCA team. Root cause or contributing factor statements synthesize the team's findings and identify what must be fixed which creates a roadmap leading to the development of corrective actions and their respective outcome measures. The implementation of these actions is what ultimately improves patient safety. A clear and concise root cause or contributing factor statement provides a compelling reason why it is important that the action being recommended is implemented to prevent a future occurrence resulting in patient harm. Use of the five rules of causation helps RCA teams avoid blame and train reactions, leads to a deeper analysis of the event, assist in the identification of effective corrective actions, addresses why the adverse event occurred and focuses on system vulnerabilities versus individual performance. It also provides a contextual understanding to those charged with implementing the action and helps to avoid unintended consequences. Development of root cause or contributing factor statements is an iterative process and it will take several attempts to complete it correctly. The more experience an individual has in writing root cause or contributing factor statements, the easier it is to do. Root cause or contributing factor statements are comprised of three parts. And once these are identified, the five rules of causation is applied. The three parts are cause, effect and event. Once the root cause contributing factor statement is prepared in this format, the five rules of causation are applied. When the five rules are met, the causation statement is complete. Decision table. A decision table is a good way to deal with combinations of things, for example, inputs. This technique is sometimes also referred as cause-effect table. These are used to model complicated logic. They can make it easy to see that all possible combinations of conditions have been considered and when conditions are missed. Let's watch the e-lecture and video lecture which will give you more information about the need of decision table. A patient comes to meet the hospital staff to reimburse his fees. I want to reimburse the fees that I have paid. Sir, no charges are reimbursed to a patient until the deductible has been met. Please explain me the criteria. After the deductible has been met, 50% will be reimbursed for doctor's office visits or 80% will be reimbursed for the hospital visit. If the deductible has not been met, then nothing is going to be reimbursed. 
Okay, I will claim the money as per the rules. The advantage of using decision table is that we may test a combination of things that otherwise we might not have tested and that could find a defect. Decision table. Clinical practice guidelines can be clarified, verified and simplified by the use of logical analysis and the application of decision table techniques. Decision tables make it easy to see that all possible combinations of conditions have been considered and when conditions are missed, it is easy to see. A decision table is a matrix that associates a set of decision variables with a set of actions. In medicine, decision variables include patients' symptoms, physical examination findings and the results of laboratory tests. Actions include initiating a treatment, undertaking a risky or expensive diagnostic evaluation or concluding a diagnosis. In a decision table, each decision value is represented as a categorical value. For example, diabetes is present or absent or as a range of continuous variable. For example, cholesterol is more than 270 mg per dl. The number of values that each decision variable can assume is defined as the modulus of the decision variable. The conventional display of a decision table lists the decision variables or conditions in the upper left quadrant called the condition stub and lists the name of the relevant actions in the lower left quadrant termed the action stub. The condition entry quadrant at the upper right list the values or states of the decision variables and the action entry quadrant at the lower right indicates the appropriate actions given the pertinent combinations of decision values above. Each column in the entry area is a rule whose antecedents are derived from the condition entries and whose consequence are indicated by the action entries below them. 1. One advantage of using decision tables is that they make it possible to detect combinations of conditions that would otherwise not have been found and therefore not tested or developed. The requirements become much clearer and you often realize that some requirements are illogical. Something that is hard to see when the requirements are only expressed in text. 2. A disadvantage of the technique is that a decision table is not equivalent to complete test cases containing step-by-step -step instructions of what to do in what order. When this level of detail is required, the decision table has to be further detailed into test cases. 3. Decision tables can be used in all situations where the outcome depends on the combinations of different choices and that is usually very often. In many systems, there are tons of business rules where decision tables add a lot of value. Summary The goal of root cause analysis is to find out what happened, why it happened and what to do to prevent it from happening again. RCA can be done as a part of a daily management program where individual workers analyze recurring work, people, or customer dissatisfaction problems within the organization. RCA can be conducted at several levels of depth and complexity. Keywords Root cause analysis. It is a means to get to the bottom of a problem or unexpected event. Root cause analysis are important to undertake when your project or product is not what was expected. Diagnosis it is the act of identifying a disease, illness, or problem by examining someone or something. Decision Table The decision table considers the severity levels of events that whether the event was potentially life-threatening or involved a serious injury, had potential for minimal harm or temporary injury, or had no realistic potential for harm. Further Readings 